Hello fellow option traders, this is Jeff and this is a short video about yield curves and how I think it applies or may be able to forecast future market movement based on the yield of the U.S. Treasuries over uh, several maturity dates. All right, so if you're like me, you're like, okay, what the heck is a yield curve and what are bonds and all this kind of stuff? Well, let's start off. I'm going to have uh, Investopedia do a little bit of work for me here and give you an introduction of what yield curves are. The yield curve is a graphical representation of the different interest rates paid by bonds with the same level of risk but different maturities. When people talk about the yield curve, they're usually referring to the difference in interest rates paid by U.S. Treasury securities, which have maturities ranging from three months to 30 years. The yield curve can be classified as normal, flat, or inverted. When the yield curve is normal, short-term interest rates are lower than the long-term interest rates, and the curve slopes upward. An upward-sloping yield curve indicates that investors expect short-term interest rates to rise. For example, a normal yield curve might show that one-month Treasury bills pay 0.16% interest, while two-year notes pay 0.27% and 30-year bonds pay 2.82%. When the yield curve is flat, short-term yields are similar to long-term yields. A flat yield curve signals that investors expect interest rates to remain about the same. When the yield curve is inverted, it slopes downward, meaning that short-term rates are higher than long-term rates and investors expect short-term interest rates to decrease. The greater the slope of the curve means the greater the expected interest rate change. The yield curve is only an indicator of expectations, as the interest rate changes that it anticipates may or may not actually occur. The yield curve not only concerns investors, but also holders of adjustable rate mortgages. The yield curve can help them determine whether they can expect their interest rates to increase or decrease. The yield curve can also indicate where inflation rates and the economy as a whole might be headed. All right, so if you're like me, you're like, okay, I guess, uh, well, there's nothing really revealing there from the ability to predict the market. So let's jump over to stock charts, and this is uh, free charts yield curve. I mean, you just do a Google search on stock charts and yield curve, and they'll uh, serve up this page for you. Okay, so um, I want to take a look at this. is really neat because I can kick this off here like this. Just This is going to tell us from like 1999 what the yield curve looks like. This is the yield curve here of the three month, two year, five year, seven year, 10 year, 20 year, and 30 year treasury bonds or notes or whatever you might want to call them. And this is how, by the way, we fund our debt um, by selling these. And then we have to, of course, pay them back at maturity with interest. So keep that in mind as we kind of go through this. So what we can do is kick off here with the animate button and then I'll talk a little bit uh, while this is going through. What it's going to do is this red line is going to start moving here. And it's going to show you what the yield curve is. I think, I don't know if this is by day or by week or what it is. But it goes through uh, from 99, from 4th of January 1999 to, and we can uh, manually move it here to uh, the 26th of December, actually 9th of January 2015. So there's a lot of data here and this is really neat. And it helps me to get a little bit of a better understanding of what's going on here. So let's kick it off here with the animate and you can see that it's moving through here. I guess it's by day and each day and we can see what the yield curve is doing. So now we're coming up to a peak here uh, in the market just before the crash of 01. And the yield curve, look what's happening here. The short-term interest rates are yielding better than the long-term. And then uh, we get into a giant pullback and now the short-term starts to come down. And 
eventually we bought them out. And you'll see the same thing sort of repeat itself when it gets to this peak over here, whenever it gets there. So now it's almost like a linear, or um, not linear, but I um, forget what they call that. I'm sorry, it's like a straight line. <laughs> it's not really a curve anymore. It's definitely a straight line. Parabolic is what they call it, yes. Parabolic move in yield. So now we're coming up, um, this is normal, normal market, uh, kind of low for the short-term bonds but they're starting to creep up and starting to creep up so now it's the curve is starting to get flat as the market starts to look like it might be a little toppy here and here's a double top so here yield is crawling up again crawling up it's very flat but you know it's not happening yet it could happen anywhere along here if my predictions are correct but eventually, uh, the short term is returning more than the long term. And then everything just kind of goes to hell here in a handbasket. And um, short term yield plummets. The three month moves way down rather rapidly. And now it's down to almost zero. And now here we have our, our turnaround. Here's our bottom. So now we're down to zero, and you'll see now that it's going to pretty much stay at zero because that's what you've been hearing is overnight lending rate is 0 0.025, I don't know, it's between zero and uh, a quarter of a percent. So that's where it's sitting down here right now, and it has been for a very long time. But what we're seeing now is that the long-term yield is also starting to move down. So what does that mean? I mean, what it means is that uh, people that like security in bonds are not buying them because they're not making anything. If inflation is 3% a year and you're sitting there on a 30-year bond and you're only getting uh, two and a quarter percent, two and a half percent, maybe 3% here, that's not really worth it is it especially down here with the shorter term stuff so what is a person to do what would a person normally do well there's no money coming in here there's two things that happen in my mind the first one is that here it's starting over again I'm just gonna pause this and I'm gonna move it over here to where it is pretty much today okay so uh, what happens two things in my mind um, the money in the world says, well, I'm not buying U.S. Treasuries. I'm not getting anything for them. But look at the stock market. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep pumping money into this. So this yield curve over here, to me, is propping up this run in the market. That's the first thing. Second thing is the U.S. has to sell Treasuries or it can't fund its debt. Yeah, it's pretty cheap right now with the 30-year. It won't give me a reading here, but the 30-year returning maybe 2.5% or something like that. Hmm. You know, um, I'm not going to buy that. So if nobody's buying treasuries, what's the U.S. have to do? Well, the Federal Reserve says, well, let's print some more money. And you know what? We'll use that money to fund our own debt. So we'll buy treasuries to the tune of, over the last couple of years, I think $45 billion a month out of a total of $90 billion that they were printing. They were taking half of that and um, buying our own debt, I guess you might say. So financing our own debt with our own paper money and the other half of it was being put into, uh, I believe it was being put into mortgages. It was being put into Fannie and Freddie to uh, prop up the mortgages to fund them uh, for bad or defaulted mortgages. So that, in my mind, is what's been going on here. So 
what are we going to look at here? What we're going to do is we're, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to be coming back here every once in a while and taking a look at this yield curve. Or maybe there might be some chart in Thinkorswim that I may be able to get a yield of the U.S. Treasury and watch to see how if this three month is starting to move up. I doubt that it's going to. I think I think that uh, this yield curve is going to stay like this for quite a while. The market's going to churn its way upward. And this is a parabolic move right here. Um, this is a parabolic move here. This is a definitely a parabolic move here. But I think, I don't see any reason for the market to crash in, unless this flattens out or goes inverted where the short term is, is um, higher than the long term. But I think that the Federal Reserve is not going to let that happen. So I think this old indicator is probably that's been very reliable is probably not going to work out too well anymore because of all the manipulation that the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government is doing to the financial systems along in partnership with the banks. Because really the Federal Reserve, they don't tell you this, but the Federal Reserve is really a bunch of banks and they really have nothing to do with the U.S. government. They just go ahead and do what they want and as a matter of, well, I won't get into that. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Will this uh, play out and show us a top here with an inverted yield curve or will it not? Let's keep an eye on it and see how it works out. Okay, that's all I have on this. I invite your comments. Um, and I do appreciate it. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that understand this better than me, but this is kind of the way I see it. I just look back and see what it was like. What was it like before this crash? There's our uh, flat or inverted yield curve. And just before this crash, same thing, but pretty much normal when the market was rising and pretty much normal when it was falling and really no way to pick a bottom but you can definitely pick a top and whether this is going to hold true or not in the future only remains to be seen so thank you very much for watching have a great day and happy trading